But most importantly, the putting into practice, the actual living of his word through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Wow. We're going to take a look at what Paul has to say here. Because it's a new year. Some of us, how many of you all wanted to start the new year and fail? How many of you said, yeah, it's a new year, I can fail all over again? I look forward to failing this year. Anybody ever say that? Nobody? No, we, we kind of like look at it as a new year. We got some energy and we're looking forward with happiness and, and maybe some joy and some expectation. Wow, a new year! what I can do in this new year. But there are a lot of us that come in with really the first attitude of failing. Whenever we say, maybe you said this, maybe you heard somebody else say, it, well, I could never do that. Or, I can't do that. If you've ever said that, you were defeated before you even began. I don't want you to start out this year with the I can't. I don't want you to be defeated before you begin. I want you to have the I can attitude. But it's got to be more than just intellectual. You have to believe it in your heart. How many of you are Christian out there? Okay, well, most of us. <laughs> it's a good thing. The problem with Christians are we all know the scripture verse. We probably heard it a, a hundred of times, memorized it since you were a kid. You must have that memorized. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. How many of you memorize that? Oh. <laughs> You're killing me. I can, okay, maybe you memorize it this way. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen? Okay. Whatever version. Yeah. As a, yeah. No, not just the NIV version. Whatever version, if you memorize it as King James. But you've heard this one before. And this is probably where we as Christians, who have heard it over and over again, are at a disadvantage. Over someone who doesn't, does not, never heard it before. Because we have memorized it, we have it in our head, and we kind of just disregard it. Oh, we know what it says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay. And we kind of teach, you know, use it nonchalantly, without enthusiasm, without really believing it. That's the problem. Somewhere along the line, we as Christians have a tendency to know it up here, but not trust that word. That phrase. What does it really mean to trust that phrase? I believe we start failing at the beginning of the new year when we say, when we look at our goals, when we look at the vision for this next year, with the, at the opportunities and the possibilities of reaching goals, of setting goals, of having a vision this year, we come up with, well, I can do that, so that's out of the picture. I could never do that because I'm in Korea. I could never do that because I'm not a high enough rank. I could never do that because I don't you fill in the blank. I don't make enough money. I don't have enough skill. I don't have enough education. I don't have enough... You're all thinking of something. I don't have something. You fill in the blank. And 
And so, because you feel I don't have, therefore I can't. You following me? And so we're defeated before we even begin. I don't like the word can't. That's probably the most destructive word for your future and my future. If I use the word I can't, then what I'm saying is I don't believe the Bible. I'll say it again. When I use the word I can't as a Christian, I am really saying I don't believe this scripture verse here. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Because this one says I can do all things not just some things not just good things not great things not just small things. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Either that's true or it's not. Either you believe it or you don't. But if you don't believe it, I don't believe you're going to achieve great things. Here's the second problem that we do when we start making our goals. We make goals based on what we believe we can do. Don't we? Let's see. Well, this year I want to take four college courses. Yeah, it sounds like I could do that. Okay. So that becomes my goal. Something I know I can do. How about doing something you don't know that you depend, have to depend upon somebody else to do? Like maybe the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Woo! But then if I fail, that means I didn't have the Holy Spirit. What does that say? <laughs> We're afraid. Right? We're afraid to dream big. We're afraid to make those goals that are beyond ourselves. And therefore, we never reach them. Because we only do what we think we can do. Oh, I want to read a book this year. Woo, good. I can give you my children's books when I had them. You know, a quick read, maybe five minutes, if you want to read a book. What's your vision? What's the vision God wants for you to do? You are all created uniquely and specially and gifted and experiences different than anybody else on the earth, anybody else that has ever lived, was ever born. You're different and you're unique. And God has created a special something for you to do. Unique from anybody else. Before the world even began, He knew you were going to be here. At this time. At this moment. And He's got special good works that He's already created for you to do. Then you need to find them. You need to recognize the opportunities that He gives you. Because they, you know, here's the other thing that we do about goals and stuff. Well, if I don't do it, somebody else will. That's not true! God created specific works for you that nobody else can do. He's going to give you the specific opportunities to make a difference this year, throughout the year. I'm going to tell you another phrase. You should write this one down. God is not so interested or as much interested in your past as He is in your future. Why? The past is already over. 
You're not going to change what happened in the past. But God is focusing on your potential. What you can become. What He can do through you. Even Paul had problems. How many? You got problems? How many of you got problems? You've had some problems in your life? Maybe you have a problem right now. Maybe I'm your problem. <laughs> Paul says, you want to talk about problems? Let me tell you about problems. Here's what Paul says about his problems. Paul says, I've had some difficulties in my life. Let me tell you a little bit about my life. Let me tell you a little bit about what has happened to me. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says this, What anyone else dares to boast about, and I am speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast about. Are they Hebrews? So am I. He's talking about his genealogy now. He's talking about his race, his ethnic background. Are they Israelites? He's talking about his nationality. So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? And he says, basically in parentheses, I'm out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I'm more than those things. I'm more than my nationality. I'm more than my ethnicity, my ethnic background. I'm more than who I came from. I'm more than where my ancestors live. I'm more than that. I am more. I have worked much harder. I've been in prison more frequently. And he's really comparing himself to the other apostles. I've been flogged more severely. I've been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. For you that aren't good in math, that's 39 lashes. I mean, those are lashes that make welts on your skin, break your skin, make you bleed. 39. Five times he received 39 lashes. Can you imagine how scarred his back must have been? Paul could have said, Ooh, time out, that is enough. I've suffered enough for the Lord. Five times? Hey, some of you other apostles, you only had one. You know, get up. God, it's his turn. Well, don't we like to do that? Oh, God. Oh, that doesn't sound good. It doesn't look good what's ahead of me. I've already suffered enough. Let, let Rick suffer for a little bit. Beat him. He's sitting there in the back in the sound room. Yeah, beat him. Paul doesn't look at adversities as these things, as things that prevent him from the mission God has called him to do. It doesn't, he doesn't say, oh, because I've done this or because of that, I, I can only do this. He doesn't say that at all. He says, I'm going to boast all the more. I'm going to use those. I'm going to use that experience so that I can boast in Jesus Christ. So that I can use that as I go forward to accomplish the goals that are set before me. I don't let them hold me back. I use them to help propel me forward. I'm not going to let them hold me back. Oh, he goes on. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, from bandits, from my own countrymen. You know, Paul writes, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nothing on this earth can hold me back when I'm following the Lord's will. Nothing! Now, if you're like me, you probably feel, man, I haven't even been in the game. If I compare myself to Paul, I haven't begun to suffer. Some of our brothers from other countries have been persecuted, tortured, killed, jailed, imprisoned because they simply say, I believe Jesus Christ is my Savior. Most of us grew up in a country in Korea, the Philippines, or the United States where it's not a big deal. So you're a Christian. You might get ridiculed, you might get teased, but no one's going to torture you, no one's going to kill you for the most part. So we have all this freedom and we have all this stuff at our disposal. We have all these great things and yet we're afraid to get out and have a vision from the Lord. We're afraid to develop a goal that is beyond what our own capabilities are. We have the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us, right? But we never or seldom let me, let me, let's put it this way. You know, when you race cars, how many of you guys ever race cars? Oh, of course, we never did. We're Christian. <laughs> when I was in my younger days and I had a 1969 Plymouth Road Runner, 383, four-barrel Carter carburetor, and you know, everybody else going, what's that? If you're not a guy, you don't know. It's a very nice engine, racing engine. And then they have this other thing when you're racing, not is it just gasoline and engine, but they have this other, this other tank called nitrous oxide, and it burns much faster and hotter and propels you even faster than the regular gasoline engine can, and it boosts your speed like, boom, they're gone, almost like a bullet. None of you guys ever did that, though, because you're Christian. <laughs> It's like if you live your Christian life without relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, it's like just going on gas. And that's all the farther you're, faster you're going to go, and that's all the farther you're going to go. But when you turn on the Holy Spirit, when you rely on Him and His power, whoo, it's like hitting that nit nitrous oxide button and putting it in the afterburner, if you will. You know, jets have afterburners. You're, you're a jet person. A lot of you guys know about jets here. Without that afterburner, your performance can really suck. If you're a Christian and you're not relying on the Holy Spirit and depending upon Him, your Christian walk probably sucks. Ooh. That hit home. Everybody got quiet and the smiles went. <laughs> what are your goals? Why are you afraid to dream? Why are you afraid to have a spiritual goal? Are you afraid God might change you? Are you afraid that the power of the Holy Spirit is going to do something in you that you don't want to happen? Maybe we have a goal like this. Oh, Lord, draw me closely to you, but I don't want to read the Bible more. I don't want to pray more. And I surely don't want to fellowship with those guys in church. Do we ask for one thing and then say, and then put conditions on it? Lord, I'll serve you as long as you let me win the lottery. Lord, I'll tithe when you let me win the lottery. 
Lord, I'll help those poor orphans out when you give me a promotion. When you give me a pay raise. Lord, I'll do... You can fill in the blank. Lord, I'll do this if only you do... And you can fill in that blank. Paul is telling you and he's telling me there are no blanks. Lord, I can do all things, anything that you empower me to do. Last week, we talked about seeking God first and asking God what his will for my life is, for your life. And then when God tells you what his will is, then you say, okay, Lord, let's, I'll do it. I'll follow you. But Lord, you're going to have to provide me the resources, the strength, and everything else. And he said, God says, no problem. I've already given you my Holy Spirit. What else do you need? The problem is we have access to the greatest power in the universe, and we don't take advantage of it most times. Amen? We sit there and cry. Mm, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not tall enough. I'm not big enough. I'm not mature enough. I need to study my Bible more. I need... We, we can fill it up with all sorts of excuses. And Paul says, knock it off. Knock it off. Stop. Even if we believe in the power of a resurrected Savior who said, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Either we believe that or we don't. And then what follows? Therefore, go into all the world, teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Spirit. teaching them baptizing them discipling others and lo here's the, here's the last phrase this one who started out all power in heaven and earth has been given to me therefore do this and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of all time. There's nothing we can't do if the Lord desires you to do it. So let's stop making excuses. Let's start dreaming big about our goals this year. Let's start dreaming about where I want to be 10 years from now. Who I want to be. What I want to be. Where I want to be. 10 years from now. We, we kind of stop at, well, we do it like a, a week at a time. <laughs> or we might do it a year at a time. And we don't see beyond that, what is God's vision for you and for me? Oh, I got one more. Paul, love him. Ephesians 3.20. I don't have my glasses. I have no idea. Oh, that might be right here. Ephesians 3.20. Here takes away all of our excuses. Here's what he says. And I pray, let's, we'll start in uh, verse 17. 16, his prayer. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Then 
he says this, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Paul says, if you're not dreaming big enough, if you're not dreaming and imagining the impossible with men and with yourself, then you're not dreaming big enough. If you are only relying on what you can do and have a goal for what you believe you can accomplish, you're not dreaming big enough. Because you're only depending on yourself and not the power of the Holy Spirit, not the power of Christ within you. What are your spiritual goals this year? How many of you wrote down your spiritual goals this year? Okay, those of you are the ones who came to a small group or a deacon or in a small group where I made you already. I didn't make you. I highly encouraged you. See, the deal is, if you don't write down your goals, you're probably never going to achieve them. That comes from every CEO that I've ever talked with. If you don't write down your goal, and you don't see it daily, and it's not before you, you probably won't do it. Look at your bulletin. You see the cover? What's it say? Give me a bulletin. I'll read it. (laughs) Each and every step you take must move you toward your goal. If you want to achieve something, then you've got to work for it, work toward it. We often like to to do this. We play the wishing game. God, I wish you would do this for me. God says, I'd love to. As a matter of fact, you know, I want you to tell others about my love. I want you to live a life that shows a humble, obedient life to me. And, and, and we go, well, Lord, I would sure love to live that humble, obedient life to you. I would love to share the gospel, your love with everybody else. And God says, great. And then you say, well, do it. God says, no, 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 no. It's not the way it works. I'm going to use you. You've got to start taking the steps. And trust me, because I'll work it in you. Too often we sit back on the bench and not in the game. God can do more than you can imagine or think or hope. So why do we limit our dreaming of a vision of what God can do in us? Stop looking at the barriers and saying, I don't have enough money, I'm not rich enough, I'm not high enough rank, I'm not in whatever country I think I should be to do God's work. God says, He wants to use you right where you are. You're here for a purpose. You're working where you work for a purpose. You're in a country that God wants you to be in for His purpose. So let's stop making excuses and let's stop dreaming the possibilities that God wants to use us this year. Let's start dreaming about the spiritual goals that can be accomplished when we say yes rather than I can't. When we use the words I can instead of I can't. Because really most of the time when we don't achieve those goals, when we don't dream those dreams, we're telling God I won't. What's your word for the year? I can or I won't? I'll tell you, it depends upon who you trust. Let's pray. 
Father, forgive us for not trusting you completely, for not trusting in your word for us, for allowing ourselves to be limited, for not participating and being actively involved where you're at work. Forgive us for being intimidated by others instead of depending upon you, relying on you, trusting in your greatness, in your ability to work through us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to be these Christians, these Christ followers this year, Lord, that we're not afraid to seek your will in our lives no matter how outrageous no matter how grandiose, no matter how out of our current character it seems to be, help us, Lord, to trust you this year to step out and make some goals with you. That you, Lord, would use us to make a difference in this world, in this year, that will make a difference for eternity. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll continue our worship by receiving tithes and offerings.